Hey people, what's up? That was a quick sample of the chill synth track I'll be making today. If you'd like to get the project file, it's a great way to support the channel and I really appreciate it. It will be on my Ko-Fi, link is in the description below. You get all of the instruments I've created, the drum samples, it's mixed, it's mastered. And just a quick note, I am using Vital for some of the instruments today, which is not an Ableton specific synth, but it is a free synth. It's an amazing free synth actually. And I'll put the link to download Vital as well in the description if you don't already have it. And quick note before I jump into the tutorial, the channel just hit 20,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to everyone who supports me on here, on my Ko-Fi, Spotify, Instagram, all the places. You are all amazing and I appreciate you. So let's dive into the tutorial. So my tempo is going to be at 96 today and I'm going to be in A major. And the first thing I think of when I think of chill synth are those kind of wubby chords that have a lot of filter movement and delay and reverb on them. And I'm going to use Vital to create these. And like I said, Vital is a really amazing free synth. And it has a lot of options that stock Ableton instruments don't have. Even Serum doesn't have some of these. So it's a really amazing synth if you haven't tried it. And if you're not familiar with it, I'm going to create this first patch um, from scratch and kind of explain some of the UI and how it works. So I'm just going to start with two saw waves. So I'm going to open here and go to basic shapes and scroll up to a saw wave. Same, I'm going to turn on the oscillator here. The second oscillator, go to basic shapes and change that to a saw wave as well. And I'm going to send both of these to filter one. So let's turn filter one on. This one is going there already. This one's going to filter two, but I want both of them to be the same. So let's send that to filter one. I'm going to take the resonance down and this controls the steepness of the filter cutoff. So I'm going to change it to 24. And let's come on over here and start working on the ADSR envelope. So I want this to kind of look a little like this. So let's drag this down a little bit of release. Next, let's create another envelope that's going to affect how the filter operates. So I'm going to come down here to envelope two and it's going to look similar. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. Let's bring this down and the release is going to be a bit longer. So maybe something like this. And we want to drag this to the filter and maybe something like this. <laughs> So really what we want is a fast open and a pretty fast close. And it gives it that kind of wubby vibe. Uh, next, I want to add some unison to both of these. So I'm going to drag both of these up to seven voices and bring these down, maybe somewhere between like five and 10%, somewhere like that. Next, let's come over here to the pitch. What I want to do is I want to add the perfect fifth to each of these. So I'm going to tune this one up seven semitones. So we can do simpler chords now. I'm really just playing an A triad here. And you get a really nice full sounding chord. Next, I want to come here to the effects section and I'm going to turn on chorus just to give it a little bit of width. I'm going to turn the spread down and bring the cutoff more toward the center, just like that. Take the mix down a little bit. Let's grab the compressor. And this is in multiband mode. It functions kind of similar to Ableton's OTT. I'm going to turn the mix, the mix down a little bit. And let's turn delay on. And I'm going to change this to ping pong. And let's maybe make this one a quarter note and an eighth. And let's, again, bring down the spread, up the cutoff, and we'll turn the mix down just a tad. So now it's sounding a little bit more like those chill synth chords. We can pull this back a little bit more. I also want to be able to automate this filter cutoff within Ableton. 
And since this isn't an Ableton native synth, we have to do a little extra work. So I'm gonna come down here where the VST is actually loaded. If you hit this little triangle, it'll open this box and it says configure. So now I can come in here and most things you can actually just click on. So I'm gonna click right here on the cutoff. And if we look here now, it's actually popped up in this box. So I can just exit out of vital, hit configure again. And now I can have control of this in Ableton. And if I'm in automation mode, I can draw in curves as well to just automate that. So let's go ahead and talk about these chords real quick. Since we added that perfect fifth when we created the patch, and every key basically plays two notes now, the root and the fifth, we can get away with really simple triad chords. So we have the A major, the F sharp minor, down to the E major, and back to the F sharp minor. And the other thing happening here is you'll notice these aren't like static block chords. These are more syncopated chords with some space in between, and this is gonna create some nice rhythm. And having that delay, and we're gonna add some reverb as well, is going to really help fill in those gaps. And just to polish these chords up a little more, I've added Ableton Saturator, some EQ to cut out any of the lows, some compression, and another compressor that will be linked to the kick once that's put in to sidechain it. Next, I wanna work on some drums. So like I said, if you decide to pick up this project file, all of these samples will be included. So I have this kick that I made, snare, and this hi-hat. So let's start with the kick, and I'm just going to do Control shift m We're just gonna do one on every quarter note here. It's gonna get Control d to duplicate that across. Same with the snare, except it's gonna be every two and four. So every two and four. And let's go ahead and duplicate that across as well. So for the hats, I'm gonna add them in eighth notes. So just like this. And again, Control D just to duplicate this across. And I'm gonna use Ableton's groove pool here. And I'm gonna use the swing logic eighths and I'm gonna leave the timing at 100% and velocity at about 88. And last, I have these tom drums. And we're just gonna use these to create some fills throughout the track. So something like this. But that sounds pretty dry and boring. Let's go ahead and send most of these drums to that reverb. Hats a little bit. The toms, we definitely want a lot of reverb on them. And I'm also gonna send them to an echo that I have set up on this uh, return track as well. Also on this Tom channel, I just have some EQ here and I'm using auto pan to pretty much put this heavily to the left and right. Okay, next I'm gonna do the bass. So I have a really simple pattern here. Every eighth note, we're just following along the root of whatever chord is playing. So the A, F sharp, E, back to the F sharp. And again, I used vital to create this bass patch. So I just started with a saw wave, took it down an octave, so minus 12 semitones. Again, it's being routed to this filter with a 24 dB cutoff. The envelope is pretty plucky, so we have a really quick attack and a short decay. And the thing here that's really making a difference, there's some unison, which is giving it some nice width. So if I take that away, you can hear the difference that makes. And I'm using phase modulation, which basically means that this LFO is controlling where the phase is going to be every time the note hits. So if I take this away, you can hear how much more kind of metallic sounding it makes it. And again, we have some effects on here. So I'm using chorus again to widen it and a little bit of that multiband compression. So for effects, I'm adding some more saturation just to give it a little bit more volume and some more harmonics, some EQ just to cut off that high end and we're side chaining it to the kick. So next let's take a look at the ARP, which is a pretty common thing you'll find in synthwave and chill synth tracks. So I have this 16th note pattern happening.
And you'll notice here that it's pretty much the same notes across the entire thing, except for here when the chords change to the E major chord. And I drop this down from the pretty much A and C sharp down to the G sharp B and E, which is an inverted E major chord. And this works because the A major and the F sharp minor share a lot of the notes in common. And especially since we have that fifth being played with every note, a lot of these notes are kind of color tones that are inside the chords already. So I'm gonna use Wavetable to create a sound for this. So I'm gonna start with the sine wave here. I'm gonna change it from modern to FM. And I'm gonna turn the amount up to about 29%. Let's change this more to a pluck envelope. So let's take that down. Let's drag this back. Filter frequency is going to come back. And I'm going to actually attach the same amplitude envelope in the matrix to that frequency. So let's do something like this. Next, I'm going to turn on oscillator 2 and drag this up to a little less than a saw wave. And I'm going to take this up 24 semitones. And let's go ahead and turn on some unison. And then let's go ahead and turn on LFO here and take the rate down and the amount somewhere around here. And I'm gonna attach this LFO in the matrix to the global pitch just a little bit. If you hold shift while you're dragging, you can do smaller increments. Okay, so that's the basic sound I wanna go for. I'm gonna add some effects. Okay, so let me run through the effects I'm gonna add here. So we have this, add OTT, just a little bit to brighten it. EQ8, again, really boosting those highs. Echo. We have auto pan. And then some reverb. So the last thing I wanted to create was a lead instrument. And so I just took Ableton's wavetable and started with the basic saw wave kept it on modern and warped it about 17%. And then we created this amplitude envelope. And this envelope is controlling how quickly the filter is opening and closing. So if you come into the matrix, you can see here that envelope two is mapped to the filter frequency. And then I have two LFOs here. One is just like the ARP, where it's a very slow LFO mapped to the pitch. And the second LFO here, is mapped to the filter frequency. So if I press this, you'll see that LFO is just kind of opening and closing this. So that's the sound just by itself. I added some more EQ just to brighten it up and some reverb. So one other thing that I did here was I turned this to mono and I have the glide up so you can hear that. So I'll play in a lead melody and this will be my core loop that I'm gonna to use to start arranging the track. So here's what the finished project file looks like. It's basically all of the things we created. I only added a few little things here. One of those things I added were these second set of chords and they're very, very similar to this. Um, they're just a slight variation. So the same thing going on here, I just added a third oscillator and slightly changed the ADSR envelope. So this is functioning more as kind of a pad and those are playing the same chords as the other chords. Um, these are just inversions. We have that ARP here doing its thing. I added a couple little kind of fills, I guess you can call them. So I snipped out a few pieces of the ARP and changed the notes a little bit. And those come in periodically throughout the track. And then we have the drums here. So the kick is on its own. We have the snare, hi-hat, toms. I have a crash here and a the same crash that we just reversed. 
to create a riser effect. And those are all in a drum group here with just a little bit of processing. And just a quick peek at some of the automation happening throughout the track. We have that filter that we set up in Vital so that we can automate that. So that's opening and closing just to give the chords a little bit more movement. Same thing is happening with these chords down here as well. We have the ARP with the filter opening and closing as well. And even the same thing down here on the main track, I have an auto filter, especially at the beginning of the track to kind of bring it in gradually. You'll see that auto filter open up right about the time that all of the instruments are introduced. And that's about it for this one. If you want to pick up the project file and or download Vital, the links for both of those will be below. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.